So go, going back a little bit, like, and from doing some research, you know, you, you, you got into cars, you got into photography because you loved cars, right? So yeah. Huge love of cars and, and autocross and all this stuff. And then realized that I'm better at taking photos than I am at racing and got into car photography. Yeah. And I love the way that like you document the fact and you're not shy about saying, you know, like I slept on floors at SEMA. Like I, I, I bummed my way to be at events and I sacrificed all this time away from my family and like missed my yeah. first baby steps. I'm like, that's one thing that I think needs to be shared more and more because people, especially in today's society are like, Oh, I want to be there overnight. I mean, you've been doing this for over 10 years and that's why you are. Yeah. Where you are. Well, as a journalist, I've, I've been doing it for over 10 years, but as a photographer, automotive photographer, it's coming on 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I just the other day, or even yesterday, I was shooting with Steph Papadakis and I was at Irwindo Speedway and I told him, look, all those years ago, 5,400 days ago or whatever, I was here and I was photographing you driving the banks, you know, in your S2000. And he's like, that's so crazy. And, I, and then I quickly said, we didn't make it very far. We're still here at Rwindell. But um, obviously, you, he's at a different level now. You know, a huge race team with Toyota, three-car team, and stacker trailer, all that good stuff. Huge shop, a dream shop with AC and everything. And, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm still taking pictures, but, of course, on a different level. And yeah, and that's kind of the cool story that I can tell with autofocus a lot. We use so much historical footage, so much historical photos that I actually shot. Mm-hmm. So because uh, with the, this modern car culture with drifting, we kind of all started around the same time and it all kind of ramped up at around the same time as social media. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, you're, you're loyal to drifting. That's where you were at. That's where you started. And, and I'm, you know, recently watching videos this morning, just preparing, like, you know, you missed maybe one or two events since like 2010. And one of them was for like the birth of your child. So you can give you yeah. that now. <laughs> yeah. I've missed one event. Yeah. Actually, well, one, one formula drift event. And it was for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no other reason for, I would miss an event. Uh, it's the same thing with the drivers, you know, yeah. if they're sick, they have a broken leg, broken arm, anything. Death in the family, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're there. You know, it's the craziest it's thing. Form. Such a raw form it, of driving, and that with the you just have to do it. And I, I, um, one of the craziest stories. My really good friend Von Gidden Jr. You know, I started shooting him pretty much since the beginning, and I, I kind of feel like our careers. It's like pretty parallel. He was an IT guy, you know, he fixed, he, he did like big networks for, or, or whatever, like big IT firms. And that was his day job, but his night job or his weekend job was being a formula drift driver. And he would compete at events and then he would do a red eye back home. He's made so many sacrifices throughout his entire life or his career and on the same way. But the craziest story, Unfortunately, a couple of years ago, he was at the SEMA show and his father helps out with his program quite a bit. His father passed away at the SEMA show in his hotel room. Um, God bless his soul. You know, I have many pictures of him uh, too, you know, his father, because he was a part of the community and he was part of his program. But Vaughn didn't, he didn't bat an eye because he's not allowed to, you know, like he, he, he's so... He could just con- he could just uh, uh, just get through it. You know, I know it was tough for him for sure. Yeah. But but th- there's so many stories like that throughout the whole paddock, throughout the our, our whole industry. We j- you just can't bat an eye. You know, I-, I can't tell you how deathly sick I've been at events. Now, of course, that's uh, impossible. I mean, that's frowned upon. You can't do that now, of course. Uh, and um, I won't do that anymore. You know, because of what happened. But there, there have been times before where I literally thought I was going to pass out because of how sick I was or how high my fever was, and I'm still shooting because there's no choice. You know, if you don't show up, don't bother ever showing up ever again. Yeah. 
I love I love the Le Mans video that you did, and you know you're showing like where you're sleeping that night, and people are asking. I think you do the video, and it's kind of like a Q and A. And yeah. it's like, you know, if you stay in a hotel, you never get into the track on time. So we're staying in these containers, which is actually luxury containers. Oh, it <laughs> is. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because, um, the, you know, a couple of steps below that is, you know, below that is sleeping in your car. That's luxury. Mm. Even more below that is sleeping in a tent right next to the track. If you can imagine how loud these cars are. Oh, yeah. And it rains a lot there. Uh, it's just like a mud pit. And could you imagine like the facilities, the restrooms? It's just a nightmare for us. It was already crazy that it was, we had to, it's like these containers, three of us per container. And we had these co-ed showers and bathrooms. And I'm like, this is so weird and scary. You know, like I have to put a towel out to, to let people know that I'm using the shower yeah. But you know what? That's luxury compared to having to sleep on the floor or in the mud. Yeah, you actually had a shower, right? Yeah, I had a shower, yeah.